How would you like to transform your forehand and understand the five steps to forehand success? Well, in today's video, we're gonna deliver just that. We're gonna break it down for you using a top pro. We got some exclusive footage from a top pro that actually has won a grand slam. And you're gonna love this video because I break down the forehand in a very simple way that's gonna help you get to the next level. My name is Jeff Salzenstein. I'm the founder of Tennis Evolution, one of the leading online tennis instruction websites in the world. I'm absolutely passionate about helping you improve faster and easier. We really want to accelerate your results and fast track you with these simple concepts that you can take out on the court the next time you play. And if you enjoy today's video, give us a thumbs up, leave us comments and questions below, and make sure you share this video with others because when you share the good word, it helps our channel. We're helping you, you can help us. We wanna make this a win-win. All right, let's get to the video. So we're looking at Marin Cilic, who has won a Grand Slam title. He won the US Open, and he also got to the finals of Wimbledon. This is an accomplished player that I actually, uh, our careers cross paths. I was playing on the tour when he was getting going, and just an amazing player. And we've got some footage here. I want you to look at his forehand. Smooth as silk, great technique, and we want to give you the five steps. I want to break down five steps for you to give you the forehand success that Marin Cilic has had in, throughout his career. So let's go ahead and break it down step by step. The first thing I want you to notice is the ready position. A lot of coaches will talk about getting the arms way out in front like this and having the racket on edge like so. And that's a big no-no. You'll notice that when Chilich is preparing, look at how his arms are bent and by the side of his body. They're not pushed out in front. Again, like a lot of coaches are teaching players, you know, get in that ready position, get the hands and the arms in front. His arms are by, the, by his side. Uh, his racket head is tilted. Notice the racket head tilted. It's not, it's not on edge like this. The reason being is that he's holding a semi-western grip, and when you hold a semi-western grip on the forehand, it's going to naturally tilt. And what I love about this first step on the forehand here is that his arms are relaxed and bent by the side, and his racket is tilted. This shows relaxation before he begins his swing. A lot of players are just way too tight when they swing the racket, and you, if you start tight, you're probably going to finish tight. So I love the relaxation, that's the first step. The second step, I want you to notice the first move. Now you can't really see the off arm pull across the body from this angle, but what I want you to, what I want you to pay attention to is how the elbow stays away from the body in this first move. A lot of club players and junior players have the elbow too close to their body. So you wanna get the elbow away and you wanna have the racket tip up. Now there are varying degrees of, of how the racket tip should be positioned in the first move position. Some players, the racket tip is straight, more straight up. Other players have the racket tip pointed towards the net. Jack Sock, Nick Kyrgios. Marin Cilic is, a, a, I would say, in between. The racket tip is up and it's pointing towards the net, but it's also pointing towards the sky. He's kind of a hybrid, he's in between. But the big key is the elbow is away and the arm is pulled across the body. Most players don't get into this great first move position, and it's something I'm a big believer in. Let's take the next step, and let's get into the swing, back, swing path during the backswing phase. Now, a lot of coaches talk about the lag, and this is, la this is important, where the racket is well behind the hand, and I love this tip, but we're not gonna talk about that, that today. What I want you to notice is the swing path and how the racket face, or the racket head, does not really drop that far below the ball. Yes, it's under the ball here, but he's starting high with his racket tip up, and he's dropping the racket head, 
but it's staying pretty level with the incoming ball. It's not dropping way below the ball. I see a lot of players drop the racket head so far below the ball that they can't penetrate. They can't drive through the court. So the key is to keep the racket when you want to drive it. Now, if you want to hit a higher ball, of course, you've got to get under the ball more. But he's going from he's basically driving the racket head straight through the ball. Yes, like I said, it drops underneath the ball right there a little bit. Okay, if I were to draw a line across, you can see it's below the ball, but it's not coming from from his knees. It's it's coming from his waist and he's just driving straight through the ball. So it's a kind of a flatter swing path right here. Now it goes up. Okay, we're still going. There is a low to high motion right there. But it's not as extreme as you'll see with a lot of club players, where they go excessively dropping the racket below the ball. Now, there's the opposite extreme, where some players don't get under the ball enough. And I see that problem a lot as well. But I want you to notice that the top pros, when they want to drive the ball, that racket head is behind the ball. It's not dropping well below the ball. Okay, so that's your third step with the backswing. Now, the fourth step... I want you to pay attention to what the racket is doing after contact. Extension is the key. And look at how that arm and that racket extends out towards the target. It doesn't just flip up and stay close to the body here. He is throwing that hand and that racket head out towards the target line. I just love that. But let's take it a step further. And I see this problem a lot with players. Players lack what I call the hand turn. And the hand turn essentially means, means that the palm of your hand is turning over. So it starts where the palm is facing the net here, and then right here, the palm is still facing the net, but it has to turn over in order for it to stay facing the net, okay? Because the ball's already gone and the racket's coming around. It's, that's the hand turn right there. But what's really interesting, and you'll see this a lot with Rafa and Alls for it, look at how the racket tip is almost pointing towards the net and pointing up towards the sky. A lot of players, when they swing, they don't turn their hand early enough. They don't turn it right there. See how it's already pointing towards the net right there? A lot of players are not making this motion where the racket actually, the strings are actually facing the net too long. And then what happens is they turn it over in this, they turn it over in this range here. It's too late. And that causes players to guide the ball. So you're really releasing the hand and the racket early. I tell players to think of releasing it before they even make contact because a lot of times they're late with this hand turn. They're doing it towards the follow through position right here and it's much too late. You don't get that release and you end up guiding the forehand. So I tell people to focus on an early hand turn with great extension and that does wonders for players' forehands. And finally, the fifth step, I want you to look at the follow through. Look at how he finishes high. That hand is above the shoulder. Now notice that he's about four feet behind the baseline and his hand is above the shoulder. I see a lot of players this deep in the court still finishing too low down by the waist. You've got to finish high if you're deeper in the court, if you're behind the baseline. If you move into the court, sure, you can turn your hand and finish lower. But when you're behind the baseline, you want to finish higher. So to review, let's review this right now. Step one, <clears throat> a relaxed, ready position. Step two, a strong first move with the racket tip up. Okay. Step three, the racket head is behind the ball. It doesn't drop too low. It stays more level. Step four, great extension and an early hand turn. And step five, a high finish. If you integrate those five steps, your forehand is going to transform, absolutely transform. If you enjoyed this video today where I broke down the five steps for forehand success, you're gonna love what I can offer you next. We've got a free gift inside our Tennis Evolution app. And all you have to do is click the link in the description below. That's going to help you master your game. We have a free instructional course inside the Tennis Evolution app. You get lessons on the serve, the forehand, singles and doubles strategy and footwork. It's inside the Tennis Evolution app, absolutely free. It's going to accelerate your learning. 
click the link in the description below or somewhere in this video. We're going to help you get to the next level. And oh, by the way, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and you turn your notifications on so you can get updated on all the latest releases. Click the link below to get the Tennis Evolution app absolutely free with the free course. We'll see you at the next lesson. Thanks for your time today.